Greetings, chem students. My name's Ryan, and today I'm going to tell you how to get your lab notebook ready to perform your experiments. Almost everything you need to know about to perform one of your experiments is in their background and procedure documents, which you can find on the course webpage. You can access these by going into Assignments and clicking the link for the experiment you are going to perform. Once you have the assignment open, you'll find a link that will open the background and procedure. Let me take you on a tour of one of these. Right up front, we have the chemical hazards and safety information. This is a list of the protective equipment you have to wear and the reagents you'll be working with and their hazards. This is followed by a note about what to do with waste, a list of the equipment you'll be working with, and the student learning objectives. These summarize the kinds of knowledge and skills you'll get out of this experiment. Next up is the background, where we tell you all about the theory behind the experiment you'll perform and explain some of the fundamental concepts you need to know about to do it. In this experiment, you need to know what significant figures are and how to record them, so there's a passage about those. Then there's something about burettes, which is one of the pieces of glassware you would work with and how to use them. Following the section on burettes is some information about acids and bases. This includes what they are and what they do in solution, along with a note that tells us what acid you would be working with and what aspect of it you would study. In this case, in one of the experiment's parts, you would be studying how citric acid affects a solution's proton concentration. And to round the background out, there's a part about what pH is and some ways of measuring pH. After the background, we come to the pre-lab section, which is a list of things you have to address in your notebook before you come to lab. I'll come back to this section in a moment. The next stop on this tour is the lab procedure you'll follow. You'll note this one is divided up into a Part A and a Part B. Not all of your procedures will have multiple parts, but some will. And finally, the post-lab assignment. This is where you'll take the data you gathered in lab and use it to perform some calculations and answer some questions. Now that you know what's in a procedure document, let's go back to the pre-lab assignment so I can show you how those work. The first part of the pre-lab is the summary, in which you'll be asked to state the objective of your experiment and or the individual parts of it. In this example experiment, we're told to summarize what the objective of Part A and Part B are separately. To figure out what the goal of any experiment is, you have to read over the background, procedure, and post-lab sections and determine for yourself what they're asking you to do and why you're doing it. Fortunately, we give you some clues in these sections to help you out. Let me show you what I would do to write a summary for Part A. As we know from reading the background, this experiment will have you determine, amongst other things, how adding an acid to a solution affects its proton concentration and pH. And you'll also learn about some ways to measure a solution's pH. In this experiment's Part A, you'd first measure out some water into a beaker, add a stir bar and universal pH indicator to the beaker, get a pH probe ready by calibrating it with red solution, and blue solution, use the probe to measure the solution's pH, then add some citric acid to the beaker, measure its pH and observe the color change, add some more citric acid, and again measure its pH and note its color. And finally, in the post lab we have these two questions about how adding citric acid to a solution affects its pH, and whether the color it took on correlates with the pH measurements. Putting it all together, for Part A we'd write something like, the goal of Part A is to determine how adding citric acid to water affects its pH, and also to become familiar with using pH probes and indicators to take pH measurements. Now that we've gone over the goal for Part A, as part of your pre-lab training exercise, you will have to determine for yourself what the goal of Part B is. Moving right along, the next part of the pre-lab deals with lab safety. First, you have to say what personal protective equipment you need to be wearing. 
And you know what those are because they're listed right up front in the chemical hazards and safety information. Coming up next are the reagent hazards. You have to list these for everything you're going to be working with. And again, you've got those provided at the front of the background and procedure document. You just have to make sure that information is transferred to your lab notebook. The last part of lab safety concerns waste and where you dispose of it. And the part of the document that tells you about that is right here, in the waste section. For the third part of the pre-lab, you will write out the procedure you're going to follow and make a template, or a list, of the data you're going to need to record. See, you're not allowed to bring a printed copy of the procedure with you into lab, and you can't have your phone or laptop out to look it up either. So, the only procedure information you're going to have in lab is whatever you wrote down for your pre-lab. Here's what I would write if I were doing this for part A. On the left is the original, and on the right is my own. You'll note that I don't have every little thing written out just as it appears in the procedure document, and neither do you. This is your procedure, and you can write it out in whatever way makes the most sense to you. For example, even though there's a note in the original about recording my data to the correct number of significant figures, I've left that out of my own procedure. The reason is because, since I've read the background and know all about always recording data to the correct number of figures and units, it's a detail I'm reasonably confident I don't need. However, if you think you need detail like that, then go right ahead and put it in. In step 4 here, there's a big ol' long list of things you would need to do to calibrate the pH probe, but, as you can see, I don't have any of them in my own procedure. This is because when it comes to computer stuff, we cut you a break and provide you with that in the lab room. To the right of my procedure steps, I've got my data template where I'll record volumes, masses, and other bits of numerical data, as well as any observations I have to make. For numerical data, keep in mind you have to include units whenever you record a volume, or a mass, or anything else with a number. For example, if I measured out some citric acid like you see me doing here, I would record 19.413 and lowercase g for grams. The only two exceptions to this rule are pH and absorbance data. You can include these units as part of your template, or write them down when you make your records. The important thing is that at some point they have to be in your notebook beside the numbers they go with. Now that you know what a handwritten procedure should look like, to complete your pre-lab training exercise, you have to write out a procedure and data template of your own for this experiment's part B. And that's how you get your pre-lab ready. When you arrive for lab, your TA will check it, and then you'll perform your experiment, and after that it will be time to complete your post-lab assignment. Which brings me to how your post-labs will be completed and submitted. Unlike the pre-lab and data sections, you'll complete your post-labs electronically and submit them online. When you go to depict complex math operations involving fractions, use Word's Equation Editor to write them out. For example, if I wanted to multiply 5 by 1 half, I'd use the Equation Editor to depict it like this. There's a document that will help you use the Equation Editor on the course webpage. When you're ready to submit your post-lab, save your work as a PDF, then go into the assignment area for the lab exercise you're writing the post-lab for, and scroll down until you get to this rocket ship looking thing. You can either drag your post-lab into it, or click the box, and manually find the file. Once it's uploaded, scroll down and click the EULA box here, then Submit. If everything went according to plan, you should see a note up here that says Submitted. For this assignment, after you've written out your summary and procedure for Part B, take a picture of it and submit it to the assignment area for this exercise. You can submit this as a PDF like I just talked about, or for this assignment only, you can submit it as a JPEG. And that's how you write out your pre-labs and complete your post-labs. If you have any questions, you can ask your TA for assistance during their office hours.